threatened me. They threatened you? You threatened me. Okay, if you felt threatened? Yes, I did. I am very sorry about that. Why would you say something like that? I am saying sorry to you. To explain, make me understand why you talk to me like that. What did I say? You don't remember what you were saying? What did I say? Remind me. You threatened me, Tamba. You said something like, I should be careful. <sighs> just wow you know what guys to be very very frank with you ever since nali accused temba of threatening her not once but twice <laughs> guys i've been worried about temba i've been scared for so many reasons i've been scared and the most obvious reason why I have been scared is because, you see, words like that, words like threaten, hmm? a housemate threatening a fellow housemate, provocation, bullying, goading, those are words that are not taken lightly in Big Brother. Ah, Big Brother Ninja is an example. You threaten someone, you're going home the very next day, or even that night, Biggie will not allow you to sleep in that house. Hey, to now make matters worse, eh? Biggie now provides clips, footages of the entire episode as receipts to back up the claims of the accuser. Aha! <laughs> that housemate is gone. That housemate will not see the light of the next day in that house. So guys, I've been scared for Temba. And I've been asking myself a lot of questions. What if Nale is not lying? What if Temba actually did what she said? What if, what if Big Brother actually has the clips? What if it actually happened for real? What if? But then there are so many other things that people are not really considering you know, in this matter. And that is what I'm about to address on this particular episode of Frankly Speaking with Glory Elijah. Listen, before I continue with this video, I just want to first of all remind us of a few things, yeah? Number one, there's the danger of the single narrative. Now, what that means in this context is, we are mere spectators we are mere viewers of the show we get to see what is shown to us by the cameraman of biggie's house all right and um, we do not get to see every single conversation that happens in biggie's house at the same time and that is because the camera's capacity can only show the viewers one conversation at a time one event at a time secondly we should also remember that this is a competition and every housemate comes with a game to play to ensure that they at least get to the top five or probably or possibly emerge the winner of the show. So in that regard, anybody can decide to play dirty, anybody can decide to play the saint, but anything goes as far as these housemates are concerned. So the conversation between Nale and Temba had started with Nale complaining that Temba had allowed her to finish up their chores all by herself. So this is the deal. Ever since Sister Mara and Yoli became head of house this week, they had fashioned out a workable method to ensure that every single housemate participated in the cleaning of the house. And the best way they had figured to do it was by pairing the housemate in twos to take care of different areas of the house. So Temba and Nale, they had been working together all week. As a matter of fact, with the altercation that Akeja and Yoli had yesterday, Nale had been one of those people in the meeting that suggested that instead of you know um, yoli babying them around as if they were kids in a school that each partner of a paired group should have the other partners back so take for instance if um temba wants to take a nap he should let nale know about it so nale will go ahead and do a part of her job and then when Temba wakes up from his nap, he would take care of the other part of the job. That was the agreement and the rest of the housemate seemed to like that suggestion. And so they had said, okay, fine, that's what we're going to do. And so guys, I was surprised that this evening, um, Nale was complaining bitterly to, um, what's his name, Temba, or basically accusing him of neglecting their chore and allowing her to take the responsibility alone in doing all of it. But I still finished it alone. Well, you know, today. Where did you get the chance to be here? After we came in. But you should have, you should have called. And then Temba was telling her that, listen, 
nobody finished their chore today because by the time we were all working, Big A had summoned everybody into the arena. So everybody had just abandoned all they were doing to get into the arena for the arena game. Now, the agreement they both had obviously was for Nale to do the sweeping and then um, Temba would come and do the mopping. But Nale had gone ahead and done everything all by herself. And so she had called Temba in the garden and was scolding him, you know, like, why didn't you join me? So Temba was asking her that, if you wanted to go and clean, you should have called me. But it happens that the time you said you were cleaning, I was eating. And you were very fast because everybody had come into the mansion from the arena. And what time did you even have to go and finish up all the cleaning at the time you claimed you clean? I am a woman who likes to do things that order with order. Okay. You're obviously a lot more laid back. What did I not do with order? I was eating, Maybe I cannot finish. be eating, listen Nadi, no matter what you say, I will not stop eating to go and clean. Frankly guys, at that point in time, I was already upset with Nali because I felt like, come on, number one, allow Temba express himself, allow him talk. Number two, how could you have made a suggestion the other day that, oh, each partner in a pair group should have the other partner's back and then you are here getting upset, blowing off steam that Temba did not join you at the same time you were cleaning the room whilst he was eating. And I love what Temba said, that he would not leave his food to go and clean. And then another thing Nale did wrong, in my opinion, was not informing Temba as she has suggested the previous day in their meeting that, oh, Temba, oh, I'm going to go and sweep. When you're done, come and mop. And then when she had by herself done everything, she's coming out to come and play the victim to claim that, oh, he should have prioritized cleaning. But he was eating. And then when Nale felt like she did not have any case against Temba, that was when she now raised up the issue of threat. So she claimed that Temba had actually threatened her in the house twice. According to her, the first time was when she was having a conversation with Tools. She, she did not know how Temba was caught up in that conversation, but then Temba went like, be careful, you, be careful. And I'm wondering like, when the hell did that happen? And then the second time, she said it happened this evening in the kitchen, that it happened in front of the housemate, and then it really hurt her because she felt like the, the housemates they were not taking it serious that Temba was actually threatening her. Now, the downside to this is, Temba does not remember. According to him, he was joking with Nale. And guys, to be very honest, I can quite relate with Temba where he's coming from. Because this week, Temba and Nale, they've been on the right track. On Monday, they had the impersonating game where um, Nale impersonated Temba. They were both wearing all black, they were on good terms. And then very much later, um, Nale was telling Temba she wants them to be friends. And then Temba turned her down, saying that he did not come to this house to be friends with anyone. That he came to this house to mingle, to let loose, to be with everybody. So I'm asking myself, I don't know, is that what is offending Nale? I don't understand. Is she so used to being, you know, accepted and not rejected? Is that why she's upset? But then guys, still, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there is the danger of the single narrative. I cannot say if Nale is lying about her allegations against Temba. The only person that can prove it is Big Brother. Because guys, I have searched my archives. I've searched through the internet everywhere looking for those two, you know, situations where Temba has actually gone ahead to threaten Nale by saying, be careful, and I've not found it. And also, let us look at the angle of in what context, in what tone, with what countenance did Temba, you know, say those words. And that is where we have to be careful in judging this matter, very much so. We have to be very careful because I could easily say to you, you're mad, you know, and you could take it as a joke and I could like, are you mad? You know, and you know that, okay, fine, Glory is actually serious now. So there's something called tone, right? Tone, manner of approach. So the question now is, in what tone? And in what manner did Temba say those words to Nale, be careful, that could have triggered Nale into believing that um, Temba is threatening her? And then she went as far as saying that she no longer feels safe in Biggie's house. Now guys, that was where I became extremely concerned and scared for Temba. And I don't like if I make a woman feel threatened, yeah. I'm supposed to make you feel safe. Do you understand? Well, I don't feel safe anymore. Yes. So now... Listen, I am not gonna uh, threaten you anymore. I'm not gonna uh, invade your space anymore. And for real, 
Temba would have easily, you know, wriggled his way out of this accusation if he does not have the issue of manner of approach. Yes. I have studied Temba's way of talking to housemates in that house. Temba sounds very, very authoritative. Temba sounds sometimes, I don't know, but in Nigeria, there's something they say when somebody just opens their mouth and talk, they say the person knows Sabi talk. Sometimes it comes across as Temba knows Sabi talk, but he's a very, very smart individual. He's very, very wise. And he's very, very friendly. He's very, very warm and receptive. But the problem with Temba is sometimes when he opens his mouth to talk, his sound is very uncultured. That is, that's, that's very unrefined with speech, with words. So sometimes when Temba is talking or addressing the rest of the housemates, sometimes he sounds so authoritative, like a father scolding his kids. He has done it a, a number of times during um, Terry's reign as head of house when they were having a meeting and everybody was shouting. You know, he was a deputy back then because, of course, the housemates they were rowdy, everybody talking at once. He immediately shouted at them, the pillow is there, you know? He put fear in all the housemates, and I think that's partially why they nominated him. And then, another time again, he scolded. And even yesterday, when Yoli was upset, even though the things he said were right, the way he said it to Yoli, he felt as though he was talking at Yoli. So because of his manner of approach, anybody that has seen and heard Temba talk before will automatically swallow hook, line, and sinker all of Nali's allegations against Temba. And so guys, in this regard, the rest of the housemates, they are simply taking Nale's words against Temba's reaction. And of course, Temba went as far as apologizing to Nale, but guys, Nale seriously wanted them to address the rest of the house, which they did. And Temba kept on apologizing over and over and over again. It's not the first time this man is threatening me and it's been taken very lightly. It's almost like we've become very insensitive as a house. Yes, we're on a show, we're doing the shit bro, but let's not become insensitive to people's... What is the argument about on social media? People feel that Nale number one is a drama queen. People feel that Nale is trying to use Temba to play a game. People feel that Nale is going through the route of manipulation and false accusations against Temba. People are also saying that Nale is trying to change or create a negative perception about Temba in the house. And guys, let me address all of those, you know, misconceptions briefly. Number one, Nale, you know, confronting Temba, complaining about him, allowing her to clean alone, blah, blah, blah. It's all about respect. Nale considers herself to be a woman of high repute. She considers herself to be an alpha female. And so when she wants something from someone and they do not give it to her immediately, she picks offense. So already, Temba has offended Nali from the beginning of this week when Temba outrightly refused to be her friend, right? So she already has Temba in her black books, in my opinion. And then secondly, it was all about disrespect or respect for her. She claimed that um, Temba was disrespectful to her by saying something, something, blah, blah, blah to her in the kitchen. And everybody felt like it was just a joke. And she also took it as a joke. But then later she came back and said she was crying, blah, blah, blah. And I see my mistake. And disrespected also. Yes. I will never disrespect you again. Yeah. Yes. So it was a thing about respect. Nale wants people to respect her. She wants the rest of the housemates to revere her, to see her as, oh, Nale the high and mighty. And Temba does not see her that way because he's a man of his own. Temba does not kiss ass in that house. He does not lick anybody's boot. He has his own mindset and nobody can do anything to change it. Now, about if Nale is trying to use Temba to play a game, to create an emotional blackmail against Temba, to implicate Temba, the only way we are going to resolve that argument is if this Sunday, Big Brother plays the clips, gives us evidence, gives us receipts to back up Nale's claims. If there are no receipts, then I am afraid that Nale has automatically, you know, set herself up. It's going to be a game of the rest of the housemates hating her and doing everything in their power to ensure that they kick her out of the game. Because already, most of the guys, they are wary of her now. In their heads, they are thinking, nah, do, Nale is now a no-go area. She will implicate you. She will mess up your game. She will destroy your reputation. She will do blah, blah, blah. So it's now Nale's word against, you know, 
that perception that the housemates have of her. Now, and then finally, I felt at some point that because Nale wanted that respect back from Temba, which she felt that she had lost, she decided to call for that general meeting, of course, through Yoli, the deputy head of house. And she decided to do so by turning a conversation that had to do with disrespect into a gender conversation. I agree with all she said, quite all right, that, oh, nobody should feel threatened in Biggie's house. People should stand up and speak. You know, she turned it into, you know, this kind of gender violence conversation, a uh, female conversation. And, and I know for a fact that in South Africa, you know, there's always been this gender war conversation. You know, men against women, women against men, men are trash, women are this, women are manipulators. There's always been that conversation. So at some point I felt like, Nali kind of leveraged on the existing societal imbalance, precariousness amongst or between the genders to fight that little war with, with um, Temba. And she won because automatically she bought the sympathy of the female housemates and some of the male housemates that adore her. So it was a lineup of hugs for, for Nali. They were coming to hug her. Oh my God, I'm sorry. And she cried. And guys, it was like investing in their emotional bank. So I am the victim. Look at me. Temba offended me. Temba did this and that to me. Oh, it's all about standing up for your right. If you feel threatened, stand up now and speak your mind. Guys, for real. I just, I felt bad for Temba. And in as much as I like Nale, I just felt like she overdid it. I mean, this guy apologized to you. You had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. He was very polite. He did not raise his voice. He did not even insult you. He wasn't rude. He wasn't even crude. But you went as far as deciding to humiliate him in the presence of the rest of the housemates. And now, most of the females are looking at Temba as though he is the predator in the house. And now, most of them, they are wishing that Big Brother should remove Temba from the house on Sunday because already he's already up for, no, for, for eviction. So basically guys, I am not in support of either Nale or Temba, but I feel really bad for Temba because he, he took responsibility for what he wasn't even sure of that he did. He apologized for it genuinely and he apologized with remorse and he promised not to do it again. So I felt like there was completely no need, absolutely no need why Nale would go ahead and call that meeting. However, I still cannot blame Nale for calling the meeting because as I said at the beginning of this video, people are different. People feel differently. I might feel threatened about something and you might not feel threatened about that thing. It could boil down to a previous life experience that I have had that is making me react the way I am reacting. So whatever um, Temba said might have triggered a sordid memory in Nali that made her feel insecure in Biggie's house. So in that regard, let's not be too harsh in judging Nali. However, the only way that this matter will be cleared 100% is if Big Brother, maybe tomorrow or on Sunday, goes ahead and plays those clips of Temba telling Nale, um, be careful, so that at least we can see the tone with which he said it, and we can also look at his body language, see his countenance, the way he said it. That way, it's either Temba is vindicated or Big Brother gives him a strike for whatever he did. But as far as I'm concerned, guys, I strongly believe and I suspect strongly that there is much more to this conversation than meet the eye. I suspect strongly that there might be another reason why Nali would choose to put Temba, you know, in the spotlight like that negatively. I don't know guys, but whatever your thoughts are, whatever your pers um, perspective is, please go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you guys on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Do not forget 3 p.m. WAT or 4 p.m. CAT Saturday tomorrow or today, <laughs> whichever one, we are going to be having an amazing conversation with Dinky Bliss and QV from the BB and Zamzi season three, season three mansion. That said, have an amazing, amazing night's rest. Bye. <laughs>